Hey, Sam, how are you keeping? Yeah, all good, thank you, mate. All good. Appreciate your time as ever, mate. Um, as you prepare to head off to Paris, let's maybe start on the game, the uh, the notorious power game of the French off the bench from the start. Um, just tell me what you're expecting and how you can hopefully counter it. Yeah, obviously, they're, uh, they've got a lot, lot to play for, haven't they? But um, serve we in that aspect, but... Um, they're renowned for, for a big pack and, and we've spoke about that um, a lot this week and how we're going to try and counteract what they can do and, and potentially um, <clears throat> try to move them around a little bit more, um, kind of dampen down their some of their strengths and, and put them into weaknesses. But uh, yeah, we've, we've talked about, obviously, they've got star players across the board and DuPont and... Um, uh, and to Mac and boys of that, they 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 can pull things out of um, out of the hat like other people can't. But uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a good start to the week. Um, looking forward to travelling to France and, and and working hard when we're out there. Squad um, squad wise, obviously no Tom Curry this week. Really good news to see Jack Willis back in the squad after all the repeated injury issues he's had. Um, what's your yeah. take just on that? And obviously changes in the back row as a result, regardless. Yeah, obviously, Cuz is is a big miss. Um, I think any international team would miss someone of his quality. But um, like you said, uh, Jack being fit is is um, is amazing. He's obviously worked hard over the last year, year and a bit. Um, I know kind of what it's like to to have knee injuries and how how hard it is to fight back. And obviously, his wasn't straightforward and, and had um, a lot of bumps in the road. And and for him to be able to put some games together for Wasps for the last couple of weeks and, and to be back in, in international mix is, is amazing. Um, but yeah, obviously we've got good players coming back in as well. Underhill coming back in. Alfie's been amazing throughout the whole whole um, whole campaign. So it is, it is uh, a shame losing, uh, losing Cuz, but um, we've, got, we've got some boys to come back in to, to fill a spot. And just finally for me, obviously uh, Knives Out, slightly for Eddie Jones in the media conference yesterday. If you don't mind, if you could just give me your personal perspective on Eddie, the role that he's done, whether you think he is the right man to lead England forward and yeah, just your experiences and how you feel he's hopefully improved you and improved the squad over his seven years. Uh, yeah, I think he's improved my game. Um, I think he's improved. I wouldn't say there's a player that's come through um, into camp that hasn't gone away, whether they're playing, whether they're, going back to their club and hasn't um, improved and taken things on board that Eddie says, um, you know, his experience in the game is, is amazing. And, and when he talks, boys, listen, um, I feel like as a group, this campaign, probably more than um, any other, we've, we've come together as a squad and, and although it hasn't um, maybe reflected in, um, in results, obviously the Scotland and, and then most recently the Ireland game, but um I feel like people can see, um, especially at Twickenham, it felt like people could see what, what it meant for, for us as players to play for England. But we're also, we're not just playing for England, we're playing for, um, for the coaches. Uh, and, and I guess that, that's, um, that's big to see that um, and, and how much maybe confidence we have in, in what Eddie does and, and, um, and, and how we play the game on the weekend. Thank you for answering that and good luck at the weekend in Paris. Cheers. Hello, Sam. Um, thank, Hello. thanks for your time. Uh, did you sleep well on Saturday night? Yeah, yeah, I was tired. Yeah, um, you know, big games like that take a lot out of you, um, and it's probably even tougher going down to fourteen men a minute in. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it was nice to have a rest. Getting out of bed on Sunday morning was that a challenge? <laughs> I think it always is. To be fair. That's my phone. It always is, to be fair. Um, the older I've got in the game, the more you feel each and every bruise and 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 bang. So, um, yeah, I mean that one was it was a tough one. Was a very physical game, and uh, not just physically but emotionally as well. We put a lot into it. Um, it was it was sad to to come up short, but um, as a team, I feel like we probably learned a lot more losing that game that we did winning. I just wonder when you looked at your GPS numbers, if, if there was a number that kind of flew off the screen, what, what obviously everyone worked that much harder on Saturday, but, but did anything stand out when you reflected on what you'd done personally? To be honest, I haven't seen the GPS numbers, um, but probably defensively, um, 
I don't know. I, I think you you have to you you almost have to work harder when you're down to down to fourteen men, and and as a pack, when you lose uh, um, a second row, uh, obviously you're always going hard in, in the game anyway. But it kind of does galvanise you a little bit, and it does bring you even tighter to, um, together as a squad, uh, which then makes you want to work for for the man next to you even more. And um, yeah, I guess. When you when you're down to, you have to do um, someone else's job a little bit more. Um, so you're probably going to be running, tackling um, more than you would do if you had 15. And has Jack been giving you scrummaging lessons this week? <laughs> yeah, mate. Knowles, he's he, he loves it in there. Um, I think if you could swap with me and he he'd put himself at number eight and he'd put me on the wing. I reckon um, he's very good. You know, for Exeter, you always see him. When he is on the wing, anyway, picking and going, um, getting involved in all the forward stuff, which is a massive strength of his. So um, we probably didn't lose too much in that area when when Jack was on the flank. Cheers, Sam. Have a good week. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. And we've got time for one more. Imogen will come to you and Charlie will come to you first in rights briefing. Thanks. Hi. Um, the atmosphere at Twickenham was obviously a big talking point from the weekend. How did the crowd kind of help spur you on as a team to produce such a great performance despite a difficult opening few minutes? Yeah, to be honest, for me, whenever I play at Twickenham, um, it is, it's amazing to, to hear 82,000 people. Obviously, there was a lot of Irish fans there as well, but um, spurring you on, uh, giving you a little little bit extra to, to keep going. And, you know, the, the game, the, the, the crowd on the weekend was, was unbelievable. Um, when we got back back to draw and I think at 15 all, um, the crowd then was as loud as I've heard it. And uh, yeah, it, it does add, add to it. The atmosphere was amazing. Um, like I said earlier, it was, it was a shame that we couldn't um, couldn't hold out and, and get the win. But um, I think I think the crowd probably saw how much it meant to us as, as a team and, and uh, as individuals. Um, which uh, probably added a little bit more to it, yeah. Yeah, and on a slightly more negative note, there were some moments where the crowd um, booed the opposition during kicks. Do you feel like situations like that tarnish a well-established, respectful culture in rugby? Um, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm not in the crowd making those decisions or, or anything like that. So I didn't I didn't hear that. Um, when you're on, on the pitch, it's hard to hear what, what um, why people are shouting, what they're shouting for. Um, I suppose it's probably not um, something to boo when decisions have to be made in games, but these decisions are up to referees to be made. Um, and, you know, as a player, it doesn't, doesn't really um, come into to anything that I, I think of, yeah.